I guess just to answer the Mr. Holmes question, City Manager, City General Monitor, I guess we're expecting, I know we will have people that live there call us if they see, wait a minute, somebody in there is not supposed to be there. Why was that sold? Or what's going on? So that's that's our mind. Who's on the ground? Or we can use the abstract. That was my first point. Second cool. point. Second like point. City Manager model. <laughs> <laughs> my second point is Mr. Day, some of the members asked how many homes right now would be eligible for this program? I would say um, maybe three. Maybe so three would be eligible. Okay. And then just so they know, obviously, you have, you have $294,000, so maximum $50,000. So you could obviously do up to six at the full amount. But you're saying there's only three. Right, because right. again, the ownership being what it is, we have, we have those problems to deal with, but we can't fix those problems. So we're not going to deal with those until we can, until they come about. And also, um, we will certainly uh, monitor our funds uh, accordingly. We're not going to stress out any of our other programs. They're all funded to date for the year. Um, and we're not going to go and start looking for houses to drop 50000 a piece. That's a big one. And most of them, again, it's capped at 40%, so you're not going to see a lot of $50,000 bills. And so the board just wanted to know how many houses could be eligible currently in this program is adopted. That's what's my question. You said three. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the <coughs> final point, Commissioner Brown talked about you know, employee housing and giving the employees that opportunity. Just recollection we, we went through that process where we did an RFP we awarded uh, proposals to three about three builders slash developers to complete those three houses those could be available for our employees and then we have four potential more houses if the Commission CRA is the Commission if they would be interested in looking at adopting a program where we could offer those to um, an, an employee program or some type of incentives we'd be willing to research that and bring that back so any, any homes that we require, we acquire on foreclosure, code enforcement cases, you know, we can just develop a program where we'll offer those available specific criteria for employees that are, are looking to locate in the city. So we can, we can look into that. That's an interest. That's all I have to say. <coughs> is there any more discussion? Mr. Mayor, uh, I would have concern if any more discussion as for what be, but I'd like to wait the table this until us now. I mean, you as you can talk about as well as you tighten up the area. Because if anything actually occurs, the city attorney is going to have to be involved instead. And I don't think we have a document in front of us that we can be in. Um, we can, uh, it, it will move through the litigation. Go ahead. So is that, is that a motion to the table? Yeah. I'm with, with direction to me for the city attorney yeah. for final language? Yes. Before, before we convene? Mm -hmm. Well, we have to withdraw the first move. Well, I guess that was not on the I guess that was an amendment that, that the person was an amendment just to add to their at a tax roll is a part of the objective. Uh, the motion was not to approve the entire plan as if. Mr. Sword, I've made that note of the plan and I will include it in the eligibility statement. Okay. So you're amending, you're amending the original motion? Yes. Is that really to the second? Second. Motion is made, properly seconded. Uh, any more discussion? Call for question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Let the record reflect that Commissioner Morgan is also present. Thank you. Chairman Doug, just one clarification, please. Uh, there was one thing, everything else is pretty straightforward. I think we're on the same page. We know we can get the city attorney to make these provisions. But when it comes to the repayment provision, if the property is being sold, we can give staff some direction on where to go with that specific provision.
Right, well, I think this is how you do it because this is how I monitored it. The business is separate from the Neighborhood Association and from the Advisory Committee. But that Advisory Committee would serve as basically the review committee to make a recommendation to the CRA board. Mr. Gagnon, can you come up and inform us as to what your process is? Maybe you might want to ask his wife to make this list. I hate a party. And everything. <laughs> uh, the question again is there. Uh, uh, Mr. Rado, we love you. How do we, you're asking how we control me? How do we select? How do we select the committee? How do, who, who makes the selection for the private court as it relates to acceptance of credits? Proposals. The committee, um, the advisory committee for the South Historic Neighborhood Association is comprised of Michael, myself, and Lucille Estes, who also is our treasurer for our organization. And we have the three to review the application, sending them forward to Jonathan and company for further review. And, and, and then it comes to the CRA board for review and approval and then to the city commission. There's something in the bylaws that indicate uh, you as officers, or is that just a default for the top committees? I think it's formed uh, initially, again, we're doing more and more programs now, obviously. Um, but people, first of all, want to do this. It's very time consuming. Our home improvement program, obviously, is 82,000. That's, that's a lot of time to work. Uh, I think there's some, uh, there's some financial expertise. There's some, uh, administrative expertise, there's some construction expertise within that group. That's the advisory question. I'm not questioning the uh, qualifications of the individuals that are there. My concern is always whether there is documentation in official minutes or bylaws that establish the groups so that it does not become uh, a group by default who makes the decision. You have to always remember that if it's a three person committee, two of the three are met. Hmm. And it's all said and done. Um, certain other groups, CRE, for example, Commission, Seventh the Sunshine. Uh, ain't much sunshine in between the two of you all. <laughs> actually, let me ask a question. Like this actually leads into another topic we're going to be talking about tonight: the CRE organization. Um, so the CRE plan uh, calls for the South Florida Neighborhood Association to be designated as that advisory committee for that specific tip district to you as the CRA board. Uh, so by default, by the plan which you adopted, or the previous board did, um, they are that committee for advising the CRA board for the use of those tax increment funds. It's fine. All I believe in is policy, process, procedure, and prioritization of whatever we're dealing with. And if there's criteria that any committee, whether it's again a three-person committee, five person, seven or nine, that's not relevant to me. What is relevant to me is that there is a checklist of criteria that's pretty much saying it doesn't matter whether it was those three or any other three, that the outcome would be the same because the criteria is what's driving the outcome. And that's always my question. That is always discussed in terms of the uh, uh, Everything is recorded in the minutes at every meeting. Right. Signing sheet for every meeting. Mm -hmm. So that we know those 20 people mm -hmm. in there. This was raised as a motion, a proper motion, in a second. That we do some part of it, but not this much on our sunshine. But we do use our procedures to report it in minutes. So that if ever question, James Moore would ask us one night, we're, we're, but we're the sign up sheet for our particular meeting. I said, we will produce it. We just didn't have it in the packet. So that's about like there is specific criteria that they would have to check off and if they don't meet the four now five criteria if you guys approve this future program it can't be funded so the overall association basically appointed the three-person committee is what you're saying yes and then we bring everything to the larger group initially for review and vote for approval before we go any further and, and I do think, just for the record, that you guys are subject to sunshine just because you're working as an advisory committee mm -hmm. to, yeah. the city, and to, yeah. to, the, to the city commission and the CRA. Uh, and I, I think that you are subject to those things to be advertised and everything mm -hmm. has to be recorded properly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gray, just for the record, you can list, I assume to Mr. Twice, you can list the official positions of the 
South Increment Tax South Increment Tax Income District Advisory Committee. We list the positions or how those people are appointed or how those people are empowered to be on that committee. So we'll put that right in the application and we'll reference the page of the CRA planner. And just as a suggestion, <coughs> we would like to see a committee that's comprised of enough people so that we don't have a super majority within one household. I agree. It's hard to get them there. <laughs> Volunteers are, yeah. I'm sure you can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> One other question I want to Whenever there is an application submitted and records keeping, record management, how, how does that work? We have centralized that. That basically comes through my office now. So all the redevelopment grant files are held over at the annex at 205 on 2nd Street. And basically, we centralized the process and then we distribute it there. We distribute it to their committee and then we process it to take it back to the board of the issue. Thank you. There's no other questions. We'll move on. We'll move to item number three PHNNA loan request for a loan to relocate and rehabilitate the James House. Ms. Van Rensburg and Mr. Griffin. Actually, I'm just going to give you a quick two slide overview and then introduce Mr. Van Rensburg to you go over the details of their proposal uh, and phase. The project location is within the Central Business District tip. Um, it does fall within the North Historic District. This arrow shows the existing location of the house and the proposed location at the corner of 3rd and Main. That Good evening, everybody. Um, this is Conrad Van Rensburg, 310 North Fort Street, and I'm here for representing the Alaska Historic Northside Neighborhood Association. Uh, just a quick overview. I guess everybody did get an application in the package. Um, I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to go through everything in there, but just the gist of it. We've now, for years and years and years, had James House sitting derelict next to the Episcopal Church. Um, most of it is not actual damage occurring over the year due to nature, but mostly was man-made. They started taking the addition off it with the eye of basically rehabilitating it, and then the church just didn't have the money for it. After that, they actually applied to demolish it. That got denied by the Historic Review Board, which started this whole process. We tried to come up with a solution for everybody, and the church has agreed to sell the house to the neighborhood association for $10, and also give us the corner property. Um, with the idea that we move the house to the corner property, which will basically anchor all four corners of that old block with historic structures. It also frees the church up that if they ever do want to put a parking lot in, which is going to happen at some stage, they can put it in between the church and the house on the corner and it's hidden from the entryways into our neighborhood. Um, from the city side, what we're applying for is a loan, we're not applying for a grant. Um, the idea is that we're going to use the money to fix the house up and then we want to sell it as a single family house. Uh, the neighborhood association has got no intention of keeping the house. Um, so the added bonus is that when we sell it, money will come back. Therefore, it's a loan, not a grant. Plus, the house will be back on the tax rolls, um, which helps the integrity of our neighborhood. It gives the city income from the house, not even looking at the income coming from the actual sale of the house. Um, what I did just to start the project is I put, I wrote the whole project up in two phases. Um, so we're not married to that. That was just figures for the planning. Uh, basically what I did, the phase one is the exterior and all the rough wood, and then phase two would be to finish it. Um, the only real time sensitive element we got in this is probably the first three items, um, which includes moving the house. The way the church wrote the letter of intent for them to sell the house to us, um, we need to prove to them that we got the funding to move the house. As soon as we prove to them that we can move the house, the title will come to us, the house will get sold over to us, and then the church won't have any more input in it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I say this is a rough estimate, um, because we sort of, unfortunately, in a position we can't really start getting donations and approaching people to help us fix the house until we actually own it. Uh, so the most important thing for us is just to get those first three items on that, um, on, in that phase. Now. 
Obviously, it would be nice if there's money to do everything at once, but uh, the other thing we're planning to do is that as soon as we've moved the house, we're going to put it on the market straight away in case there's somebody who wants to come and finish the wood. Um, and as we do work on the house, we'll keep on increasing that asking price for the house. Uh, that will open it up. For instance, if we've got the whole outside stabilized, if somebody wants to come in, they've got the option of buying it at a much lower rate and they can put their own material in whichever way they want. Um, I've got a couple of pictures. <coughs> Just to put there, that's what the house looks like at the moment. Um, the sections where the siding is missing is actually where they took the addition off and then they just temporarily put all the wood back up. I've been through the structure. Um, all the walls are stripped down to the studs and actually it's still structurally sound. And in a way, it will help us to do the new wiring and plumbing as well. Over here you can see the room has actually still got the original wainscot in it. Uh, it's not very clear on the picture, but the subfloors are all fine. Uh, that's an old varnished seat in the window bay, uh, front door, and it's got beautiful old carvings, wood carvings, that's still intact in the house as well. Uh, so in a way, with the demolished wood, they did help us a little bit because all the glass or everything's already been removed. We basically got an empty shell. We've got to replace some of the siding on the outside, put a new roof on it, and then take all the inside off of that. That sums it up. Be when we finish, it'll be two bedroom. Two bedroom, one bed. Mr. Zimbor, a couple questions from uh, Mr. Van Redsburg. So just for the record, you are an expert in historical preservation renovations, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, so, so this first phase, you, you're saying basically cost for closing, foundation, moving the house. <clears throat> that would be a loan from the city to yep. the North Historic District with the terms and conditions obviously negotiated. Yeah, the negotiated time. with the city staff. Okay, and so then if or when the house sells, obviously it's getting refunded to the city. Okay, so, so let's see. Okay, so one point, so there, that's a phase one, let's say the first phase two. You ask for additional those funds are granted, the house is improved and sold. What would be, if there's a profit in the sale, how would those profits be distributed? Um, I, that would be a question for, City Attorney as well. I think we're getting a little bit of a gray area if we show a profit on the house, if the city shares in the profit, because I don't think they can use stuff money to make money for themselves. Mm -hmm. What the neighborhood association wants to do is we're using this this project as a seed program. Uh, we've got several more projects. There's one on Madison Street we're looking at, mm -hmm. or another one sitting on 4th Street, which is abandoned, they're falling apart. If there's any profit in it, what we'd like to do is take that profit and tackle the next one. Uh, whether people want to donate it to us or whether we use the profit and some of our own funding and buy it, and then we'll come back on a case-on-case -case basis and, and tackle the next project. So whatever, our plan is basically to tackle all the abandoned houses we've got in the neighborhood in a proactive way where we physically get involved and get moving on fixing it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, there is a cost that's associated, associated with the administrative cost, I would think, as well, and that's not making a profit. Uh, I think if you do a loan, there is an administrative cost that has to be taken care of and considered as well with that. Uh, and I don't know whether there is a rule within the CRA that the city can't earn, the city can't make money. I don't know what, in fact, at that point, I don't know whether it's actually CRA money <coughs> once the house is sold. Because I think it's like two different entities there, right? It's the North Side Historic District and what's that lead, what's that lead? Uh, It'll just be the North Side Historic District. Yep. And you're not, so therefore, it's just the North Side. There is no other uh, association at uh, where you guys are. But how, I thought I read something that said that you guys who was another. Um, my company name was on there basically just because I'm advising them on how to do it. Okay. Uh, but I'm not part of the deal. Basically, the church is signing the house and the property over to the neighborhood association as sole owner of it. Okay, well, that's cool. that, that clears it up for me then. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. When the, when the house is sold and, or well, the house, CRA, will it be paid back? 
the loan will be paid back. The loan will be paid back. Yeah. But at this point, you can't tell us the percentage that will, the additional money that we'll receive. Um, is that what you're saying that we're not entitled? Yeah, I think what we need to do. Not that, too, is, you know, you know, when, that, when we loan that money, that money actually, we don't get interest anymore off the money as well. So, therefore, there's some administrative things that has to happen to make sure that everybody's made over. And that's something that I think that we'll talk to city staff about in the city attorney. Um, I do a lot of state grant work as well, and typically I think you can get up to 10% administrative costs. Because usually when a non-profit get these state grants, they can actually use some of the money, but you can't profit out of it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mr. Holwood, uh, it's quite easy for city staff to document basically our legal fees and our time, and we can just put that as a provision in any subsequent loan agreement that basically the city slash CRA staff is reimbursed for those expenses to make us whole, as you suggested. But keep in mind that there's no guarantee that the structure will sell for the equivalent amount of the loan and what they put into it. So it would probably be a pro rata share of what's invested. But I guess my question would be now again, if that's the case, if there's a, if, if, is there an interest rate associated with the loan? We did not propose that uh, because this is basically just a, a conversion of the, the grant program that we have now. Basically, we're taking a structure that's uninhabitable. Uh, it's not on tax rides and, and, and causes downtown to see in this particular project, how progressive we are you know, in getting this project moving. It's a small project, and if it's in fact 80% uh, of it is, is in kind, I just think that um, I agree with Commissioner Campbell that it needs to be um, detailed out if, if there's a way to <coughs> the CRA to have an amount not to exceed as it relates to out of pocket expenses versus the, the in kind, and I think that that will cause the project to be. So, Mr. Griffin, do you have a stack? Do you have a ballpark figure as to where we are? Yeah, I did an estimate based upon you know, the, the joint concept of yeah. public park and parking lot. Keep in mind that it's a more expensive option. You have five site amenities, five plants, uh, additional lighting, uh, and that was at five thousand dollars. So that number is definitely going to come down because essentially our doing is creating a great parking lot with two canopy trees at the island that are required by code. So I can tell you, we're not going to exceed five thousand dollars. Plenty. And like I previously stated, we were purchasing landscaping and site amenities, which is already budgeted within the CRA budget for this year. <laughs> you're not having to make a budget transfer with this project. So uh, would the amount of $5,000 be friendly to the motion in the second? That is the so, I, I said that. I said that. Okay. So the, the, the attaching the right or not to exceed $5,000 is friendly to the motion in the second. Is there any other discussion? Call question. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Roll I'm sorry, roll call. I'm sorry. <laughs> At this point, uh, roll call, please. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mr. Norwood. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mr. Holman. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. our area was eligible for it. When I say our area, I mean the city of Palaka. 
We applied for it. We received it. We have a permit. It's in place. We just now have to build it. Uh, to this day, I think uh, we've, uh, we've expended almost $5,000 of our DPI money to move us to this point. Uh, we've come to an impasse financially. Uh, in order to get us up and running and broadcasting, we're, uh, we've uh, conservatively estimated that we need at least another 10000 in funds to purchase the equipment. This is a one-time expense. Uh, the Radio station, a low power FM radio station, uh, is something very unique in the medium of, uh, of uh, in our world. Um, I was going to regale you with all the uses it can go, but I'll be very quick. The city of Black has 10,000 residents. Uh, it would reach out to all those residents. As you know, we are the county seat. We have about 70,000 people in the county. At any given point, we have 30,000 plus people in our city. Uh, the radio would broadcast live to people in cars listening on their radios. Uh, we would use it for special events. We would use it for educational programs. We would use it for uh, emergency situations. Uh, our permitting application expires in August. We don't have the funds to go forward. I'm here uh, on hand and knee asking for assistance uh, from the city of Blacka and uh, specifically the commissioners and the CRA board. We need some kind of help in moving this project forward. Um, we know there's money available. We know it's been budgeted to other programs. We're willing to work with the Main Street on this. But uh, I, I think we would be missing an opportunity if we didn't take advantage of this and have our own local radio station to use. Has there been any communication with Main Street on this project? Uh, Informally, I've approached Charles about it before, but there's never been anything in concrete. Um, Charles is here, he can speak for that. He knows that we've applied for it. He knows I want money from him. However, uh, we differ on where that money should be funneled into revitalizing our downtown area. And I don't mean that in any derogatory way. We just differ on, on what is more important to bring business to our city. Do we have uh, any, any, any more details as to Besides the things that you've outlined thus far, do you have a business plan or something as to how? Well, we actually have to, we have a, a guideline that we have to follow for FCC, which requires so much programming and so much uh, hours of educational, um, public use, and, and so forth on drivers. I mean, I could provide you with that, but um, as far as a business plan, um, it's a, it's a one-time cost to, uh, to set the equipment up and broadcast it. And as, I'm not a radio person, but we have done some research on this. Uh, most of your programming you can loop and meet FCC's requirements. For instance, if we wanted to broadcast uh, these uh, meetings right here, live, we could do that. We could digitally record them, and we could play them on certain hours for the citizens of Blackwood. If you had uh, the Blue Crab going on, you could uh, be broadcasting live, letting, letting the people know that are coming through our area, you know what the events are and what's going on. If you had a problem at the water plant and you needed to let the businesses and the residents know that uh, you had to boil the water, you could do public uh, service announcements. How many jobs? Jobs? Yeah. It would be manned by volunteers. Okay. Do you think that you could train you, be a, a component to train you how to do broadcasting? Absolutely. We've discussed at length that we should bring the schools on board with this. Uh, we think it would be a good tool. Uh, to allow them to bring students in, classes in, to allow them to broadcast live. Again, the sky will be the limit with the, the opportunities that you can use with the radio station. Yes, sir. My question would be how, if, even though this is a one-time um, request, it, does your business plan show what your operating, annual operating cost will be and how are you factoring that in the existing budget or have you already created a line item to deal with that over here associated? Well, the, again, once the permit is in place, I, I, and, and I might be speaking out of turn here, but um, I think there is a, a, an annual fee from FCC, but considering that it's a low power okay. FM, I think it's a nominal cost, like $120 a year to, to maintain that. Uh, there will be maintenance uh, with uh, equipment, of course, you know, equi as equipment breaks and so forth. Um, it's just been a really lean, lean time for the Downtown Merchants Association, and we're very, uh, for lack of better words, we're stretched very tight on our finances at this time. And 
It's a nominal cost of upkeep. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor I, I had some conversations with some of the CRA board members about this item, and I've also communicated with uh, Mr. Deputy, who is the president of the of DPI, and I sent him an email. My observations and, and I guess concerns is um, I sent Mr. Deputy the CRA plan, and I highlighted some specific sections relating to marketing. And as I think everybody knows on this board, that we can only set we can only use TIF funds for projects that are specifically listed or implied. Did you can make the argument that they comply with the goals and intent of the, the plan? I, I've got some concerns that a one-time personal property purchase, which in the past in any other grant program, the city has not funded TVs, uh, anything that you can remove from the building. So, so, so pieces of equipment we have not funded. We funded HVAC roofs um, to remove the light get, get structures, but we haven't funded a piece of equipment. So I, I you know, I suggested that that may or may not be an eligible expense. I also suggested that um, in most grant or all grant applications, we get a business plan. We get how the organization is going to provide 30 hours plus of programming with no full-time staff. Um, and I've also suggested that um, in order for us to analyze that request, we should have those documents that we request from everybody else. So we recommend that this item be tabled, the organization bring back those information so the board can obviously make a determination whether this is a, an acceptable or in the plan as well as th their business plan is something that you want to fund that forwards, forwards the goals and missions of the CRA. Yes, sir. I guess my, my question would be, how does this, what does will this radio station do for like, uh, and the surrounding areas of the current radio stations that do? And do we want to actually really get into funding a, a public radio station and a private radio station that can go out and the advertise and that type of thing? How does that work when, uh, uh, I guess to me that's a public entity, you know, actually taking away business from a private entity. You know, I'm not sure I understand your question, Commissioner. They do the public, the uh, you guys will be also be doing advertisement. No, you're, no, sir, we're not allowed to advertise. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're not allowed. To we can't. We take. Hey, we can't take money from businesses for advertising. We would be giving free marketing to the downtown area. Okay. So, and, and I would, I, I would, if I can, and, and I would like to address two things that Mr. Zimbor said. Um, this does fit into the CRA plan with marketing. We purchased uh, billboards on Highway 95 that we don't now own and put, put logos and shop downtown with them. So I, I don't think that it doesn't fit into the CRA plan. However, in deference, I do think if that's the requirement that you want, if you want more documentation of it, I, I don't have a problem coming back to you at the next meeting. I just want to make the board aware that we are under a deadline for this. As far as competing with the other public radio stations, again, we are not, um, we, you cannot come to me with your business and say, Alex, I want to purchase two hours of time on your radio station. Um, we can take uh, donations to uh, sponsor hours, um, but I don't think the, uh, the free market system is, is what it is. And as far as 30 hours of programming, uh, I believe I answered that. They have programs now where you can you can repetitively run things. If I if I did two hours of education about the Wetland Center in the downtown area, and I wanted to play that every Wednesday night at nine o'clock, I have a computer program that would allow me to do that. Back to my question. If you do, if if you can accept donations. If I can come to you for advertisement, whether it be political, whatever, and I give you a donation rather rather than paying the local radio station, wouldn't that still be taking advertisement away from the radio station? Well, I don't I don't know, sir. I don't know how they how they budget, but I know that the we've used we've looked at other models, say Biker College has their own low power FM station, and people are allowed to sponsor an educational hour, uh, sponsor an hour on the Bartram Trail sponsor an hour on historical places in the Palaka downtown area. This is brought to you by Libel's Tire. Here is an hour of different houses and the historical significance in Palaka. I'm always cautious when it comes to spending public funds mm -hmm. and getting into areas that we have local businesses that are in. 
I, I agree with you. I'm always always uh, give great scrutiny to how my tax dollars are spent, sir. I, I'm with you on that same vein. But I, I think this is a very noble project. I think it's a very uh, it's an opportunity that doesn't come along. <coughs> Again, I can't stress to you the the rarity of the FCC giving out a radio station license to broadcast, which will broadcast to all of Alaska, probably a little bit further too. And uh, it, it can be used for a multiple of things. And once it's in place, it, 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 there's not that much maintenance. And this is not something that I'm going to be coming back to you the following year and saying, hey, I need another $10,000. Once the equipment's in place, DPI is confident that we'll be able to maintain that and uh, keep it running at an optimum level. We're just having problems with our startup. And we, and again, that's that's where we're at, and that's why we're reporting. Yes, sir. Based upon the um, commentary from the city manager and the response um, from Mr. Sharp, I suppose it's not to be tabled with the understanding that not only will they come back with a business plan, but um, also Main Street will be consulted. And if there is not a funding source or a mutual or reciprocal agreement for funding, uh, then the situation becomes notable. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Yes. Motion been made properly. Second, any discussion? Yes, I would like to say, you know what we forget? That those tax dollars that, that the downtown workers are asking for comes from downtown workers. <coughs> so I, I think as we look at this, if, if they have viable things that they would like to do with that money, it should be considered. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Any further discussion? Sorry. Seeing none, we'll call the question. Roll call, please. We will have a meeting before you all need to get back in three months. Our deadline is, is August the 3rd. Okay. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Klein? Yes. She's a downtown merchant. She's in the Um, Okay, Vice Mayor Brown? Yes. I'm a downtown merchant, but I don't belong to the food. Yes. Commissioner Borman? Yes. Yes. Mary Yes. Mary Ellen. Yes. Mary Ellen. Yes. Mary Ellen. And just for clarification, what, what, what exactly, again, is the commission requesting you to come back with at the next meeting? So I can, can come back on the business plan and, uh, and also to get with to check additional sources with Main Street and more funding funding sources on Main Street and if those and there are no other options then, then it's really so, so just, just again and I apologize just for clarification if the meeting between Mr. Rudd and myself he advises me that Main Street has no additional funding for this it's a new point. If y'all can come up, if they can come up with one, I'm just I mean, you, you all have met before, and there were issues as to, because if there's not a line item, if there's not a line item existing uh, to fund this, that means that there's got to be an innovative package put together.